Sketch. So welcome everybody. Uh, this is Carol Rosardi, president of Jane Stories. And today it's my honor to be with Nikki Dolson. Uh, Nikki is the author of Love and Other Criminal Behaviors, which was a finalist for the Clara Johnson Award this year. And we're delighted to have Nikki talking to us today, talking to me, it's us. And we will be posting this on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. And Nikki, you're free to share the post with anyone you'd like as well. So Nikki is, has been writing and does some crime writing. And one of the things that I liked about this book was that the title seems to pay a little bit of uh, homage to your crime writing with love and other criminal behaviors but also seems to be your own take on all is fair in love and war. Mm. And so I wanted to you to talk a little bit about the title and how you came up with it. Um, gosh, that, that, I wish I could say that's exactly it, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like with anything, you know, you're trying to put together a collection and it has to have a name and it, you know, is it just the name of a story? Is it a theme? And um, none of the story titles really jumped out at me as encompassing enough for all of the stories. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, what is it really about? And it's at the core of, I, I feel a lot of what I write is love and, you know, what you do to get it and what you do to keep it and what you do when you've lost it. Um, and how, you know, these characters work around that and how it fits in their lives. So love, and then, you know, there's dead bodies. So criminal behavior. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really enjoyed it. And I mentioned to you before that, you know, Georgie Ann wasn't my favorite person, but I love the narrator of that story. And I just love how your characters especially in, in, in this story, but they all seem to say what we all want to say, but we don't have the courage to say it. Yes, yeah, I, I, I dig that story. Um, I would have to say that I don't really like anybody in that story. Like they're all not really nice, but, but again, it's the, the relationship between you know, the narrator and Oscar. Um, um, that that friendship there, um, and also you know the their relationship with their spouses too. I mean, you get a little glimpse, but I mean, Oscar is loyal to the end. You know, yeah. he's like, "I love you, but I, I'm not choosing you <laughs> over my guy." So you know that that's I, I like their their interactions with each other and that. And I I also liked how the characters they were so inclusive you know mm -hmm. racially sexual identification wise i mean it's sort of like i'd like to think it could have been a group of my friends that it was just everybody was there and i i, I have to assume that that was intentional on your part that you wanted to be inclusive and, and show this yes um and also not necessarily talk about it really yeah, it just was there. It wasn't a yeah. big deal. Yeah. A, you know, a glancing comment because sometimes it's, you know, it, it, it's a dig that's too good to pass up in, in all the stories sometimes. But for the most part, it's my sincere desire to tell similar stories to the ones that I loved, but to populate with people who look like me or, or, or my friends. Um, in, in situations or just, you know, people of color are everywhere, flat. I mean, you know, whether it's the lone, you know, black person in the, in the office or, or, you know, I mean, and just the different levels of that. I mean, I, I don't know, it's, it's race, but it's also, I guess maybe class and, and how we, you know, exist in those spaces and to show them all in those spaces and still having the same, you know, universal experience of, you know, people fall in love, people, you know, lie and they get hurt and they seek some vengeance. So. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things too is how 
well, you meant we mentioned race in Lucy Lucy, mm -hmm. which is about a, a middle. If I'm remembering right, she's middle school. Freshman. The freshman. Freshman. So okay. So, kind of go. It depends on where you're at in the country. Where you're at. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. In any case, a very tumultuous time in any young girl's life, but right. she's also navigating being biracial, and the issue of hair, which mm -hmm. always reminds me my first introduction to the issue of hair for, for black women was Zora Neale Hurston and their mm -hmm. eyes are watching God. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I thought, well, this is, this is Janie at 13 trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. Yeah. Did you model Lucy Lucy after anyone or did you pull from your own experiences or all of the above? Uh, I'm going to go with all of the above more directly. Um, it was years after, but my my own daughter is biracial and and um existing in those spaces was hard for her um and then you know when you're you're a little bit different from everybody personality wise or your interests are different um you know you're the odd one out and i very much was the odd one out um in school uh uh you know you yearn to be if not the popular kid, but at least in some of those circles, because um, it's it looks interesting. You know, it's one of those grass greener on the other side till you get there, and maybe it's not so great. But um, all of that, all of that, fed into that story. Um, it's it's not my kid, it's not me, but those feelings of not belonging, not learning how to be comfortable in your own skin once you realize you're not like everybody else. Um, um, you, you know, particular way, even if it's not the case, even if somebody could look at you and say, you absolutely belong. It's, it's still very much, you cannot feel that way. So it's all of those about, play in that. Yeah. About how you feel. Yeah. yeah. Do you think a lot of writers feel that way? And that, that, that that's what, mm -hmm. what draws them to the art. I mean, not just writing is an art, but most artists that they, they feel they need to be their themselves and that's one way they can do it? Um, I think artists for sure, uh, in general, um, you know, however you're making your art, I feel like those who want to do it are usually channeling something deeply personal into that. Um, whether it's evident or not, but I think, I feel like that's what, that's, that's passion about something about, you know, it's, it's why you sweat, you know, and just kill your back over a keyboard all day or, you know, paint, you know, in, endlessly into the night, you know, canvas after canvas to achieve something that you're happy with. Um, particularly if, there's even the, the slimmest of chances it's going to be seen by somebody other than you. You know, uh, uh, maybe, you know, for, I have an affinity for, for painters and artists like that. Um, but, you know, so the, the, the person you most want to see your work, whose opinion matters the most to you, um, you know, as, you know, Stephen King said, you know, your constant reader, you're, you're, you're the one person you write for, um, for me, that shifted as I've gotten older, but there's still somebody I have in mind that I'd like to impress a little, you know, um, does um, that person know it? Oh yeah. He totally knows it. Yeah. He's okay. my, he's my writing buddy. Um, you know, and I, I, it's the, if I can get a chuckle out of him, you know, I count that as a win, you know, yeah. he's, he's very much somebody who, who, opinion matters greatly. Um, um, and also, you know, he's also one to be like, I, I, I love what you're going for, but that is so wrong. <laughs> and that's what I appreciate both of them, you know. And, and you, every writer needs that. I so, feel so. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Somebody who's just going to say, oh, this is good. That's not helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like your mom. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yes, and she will most definitely. This was great, and then so and she puts it in the stack of other things she finds great. 
I don't, yeah, she's not good for criticism. Yeah. Alex. <laughs> no. but, but that's why she's your mom. You know, that's beautiful. absolutely. And I am that way with my kids. So <laughs> great. So you've said you have a daughter. Is she old enough to appreciate what you do? Oh, yeah. She, she's 26. She's 26. <laughs> Nikki, I thought you were like 27, 28. <laughs> well, thank you. But no, 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 no. We can add 20 to that number. Um, um, so yeah, my youngest just turned 18. So I have three. I have three kids. Yeah. Well, well, congratulations on that. So you had mentioned, since we just mentioned age a little bit, um, mm -hmm. when I asked you what you'd like to talk about, you said, you know, um, you feel like a lot of authors struggle with, are they where they should be? Mm -hmm. And in their creative process, I guess, or in, actually, I should ask you, did you mean creative process? Did you mean commercial success? Did you mean what did you mean by that? And I just want to remind you about Grandma Moses, who was over 60. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think for for every, you know, it's going to be writer specific. For every writer, it's it's different. Their own personal, uh, uh, you know, mile marker where they think they ought to be, um, you know, divided by, you know, how many years they've been doing it and divided by how many books they have and, you know, things like that. For me though, um, I got what I felt like such a late start um, and just uh, uh, my age-wise other writers who were similarly um, starting out, but seems to have, you know, you know, just leaps and bounds their careers have gone, you know, and, and, um, you know, not all writers are the same and, 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 you know, not all talent is the same. Not all talent comes to uh, fruition all at the same point, you know? Um, so I very much feel like, okay, I, I'm not this person, but I want to pursue that. And why am I not getting there or why, you know, not getting into the mags I really wanted to get into. Um, and what is it about my writing that's not working? And what is it about theirs that is, or, or just writers in general who I love that I'm like, what is it about mine that doesn't work where theirs does? And it's so obvious they were to that when I read their work. Um, figuring out uh, um, that really I'm exactly where I need to be and it's just, I don't think I'm terribly ambitious. I just want to be better. And I had to accept that that is just the way I'm kind of hardwired that way. And I go at it from different angles, but I just want to be better. So I, I can't take that thing in me and hold it up to somebody else's career and say, you're not where they're at. There's something wrong with you, but I'm not that person. So I can't be where they're at. I have to accept where I'm at and just to be better, better than the last thing I wrote, better than the last story that I, I, you know, put out there in the world that maybe got printed. Um, to all well, as a reader, I can say, I think, I think you are where you should be because I loved your collection. Thank you. I appreciate that. I really um, did appreciate that. Do you think it's harder as not only a woman, but as a woman of color to be published and to have someone willing to, you know, give voice to your voice? Hmm. Um, yes. Uh, you know, I'm in that very, you know, the, small community of like crime writers. Like I don't write uh, mysteries, you know, there's not a, a somebody trying to figure out while so, why somebody's dead. Like, you know, in the broad stroke, like I don't, I don't think I really have ever written anything like that. That is what I consider a traditional mystery. Like we have to go figure this thing out. Um, why is somebody, why is something gone? You know, Agatha Christie, oh, in those veins. And I don't write that. I have I like reading it but I never found myself terribly interested in writing it I always like to write about 
I feel like the aftermath or that that knee jerk impulse to like get a little payback or or you know, how do you I, that foolish impulse to do something that you know if you had taken an extra breath that maybe that person wouldn't have done but now they've done it without I, giving too much away kind of like <laughs> your story the mistress yeah or as if you were a mystery writer you would have started at the end yes you know you know you know and you're interviewing the mistress and the other person in the room over you know the body yeah. um you know is is you know who, who did what when and where um i loved uh, the twist <laughs> um i'm glad thank you <laughs> um you know it's it's stuff like that I, I i particularly enjoyed that one if only because um when you read it out loud or at least when i read it out loud I, there's a rhythm to it that i really worked hard at <laughs> for something being short i worked really hard to get the rhythm in that i i really enjoyed that for me personally um so that yeah <laughs> well you you mentioned rhythm and i we talked about it just a little bit before we started recording but one of the things that I really liked, and I, I, maybe I sound effusive, but it's sincere, is that every word was mm. perfect and that there was oh. a terseness mm. to it that felt right. Mm. And, and you know, maybe that's the rhythm that, that you're talking about. But there was, there was no hemming and hawing with these characters. You know, the, the only... The only one I can think of right now, and I, I have to check my notes, was, was Kendra when she wondered if she was worth killing for. Mm. And, and that was like, everything else was just seemed more direct. And this was the one, hmm. But there were some others too. I mean, Sunrise, there was some contemplation. But, but Kendra really struck me. And I wanted to ask you if that was the same Kendra who was in Take the Hint. Take the, yeah. That's the same Kendra. Hey, yeah. hey, I'm sorry, I said him. <laughs> um, yeah, she's she progresses through, and you know, uh, uh, yeah. I wrote that story, and then I kind of realized I'm like, this is about this character. Why am I trying to make a new character for this when it's her? It's absolutely her. I can dress her up however I want, but that story, um, God, is it Star? I'm forgetting the old my own <laughs> name. Stars. Star. Yes, yes, it is Stars. Um, uh you know i mean like some characters don't leave you alone and i started writing that and i'm like well of course it's you know there's a you know a want of a baby there's boxing it's always going to be kendra for me at this point um and they were years apart that i wrote those i never would have read anything about boxing <laughs> had it not been your book and i never to my embarrassment never considered boxers as real people, because the, the sport seems so violent to me, even though I, I've met Muhammad Ali, I was fortunate enough to meet him and, oh, wow. and have a, my brother actually did some work for him at his training camp in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. But, but that, that was fascinating to me that, well, they do something violent, but they're not violent people. Oh, oh, they're multidimensional, just like every person is. And, and, and you, you did that with so many of your characters that you gave them a, a three-dimensionality that I think most of your readers, at least I, I didn't see before. And that's a real gift. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad you appreciated that. I, I, you know, boxing is super violent. I, I, I tend not to watch matches, but I don't know if you, ever saw, uh, I think it was HBO, they used to do like the Friday night fights, but like the hour before they aired the show or the, the match, they would have like a, a training camp time with the one of the fighters and they would follow them through their training and talk to them through their training and all that. And it's all, it's all process. How do you, you know, get in the, the place to do your job? this thing that you love hopefully or but I mean it's still their job it's what they're getting paid for and there's all this work up to that and they would just talk about their process and what they're doing and how they eat or how they you know 
there are rituals for that too. Um, that was the part that I loved about the boxers. I mean, there's, there's, you know, the, the, what's it, A.J. Liebling's uh, The Sweet Science. I read that book. Um, I read a lot of uh, essays on um, boxing and fighters. Uh, Joyce Carol Oates wrote a book about them. Um, oh, wow. God, uh, um, Catherine Dunn, uh, she wrote Geek Love, but she also wrote a book of uh, work on boxers boxing, fighting like that. And it's uh, um, really those, those little columns and essays on that just illuminate those fighters in different ways. Um, and all of that fed into that, that story, that character for that. That world's really interesting to me. Wow, definitely. Do you have a favorite character in your book? Oh, I would say kind of, it, it depends on the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, I got Lucy in Lucy, Lucy, Lucy's. Uh, I'm particularly fond of that whole story. Um, some, a lot of the stories don't have a lot of me in it, but that one has a lot of me in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, there's a, there's talk about a yellow Subaru in that. And my mom had that yellow Subaru. Um, <laughs> uh, there's just a lot of young me that's in that story so I'm very fond of it as a whole but Lucy is very much um a, a, a character I love um who else uh um yeah I think god there's so many there's yeah I, I have to say that the they all gave me such pleasure in their writing because when I figured out okay this is it this is who they are and then it's really you know, the revision and whatnot like that. But very much when you get to your end of the story, you know, because that character is really alive to you. So in that way, they're all kind of favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. to be like, you know, they're I all like asking, It's asking yeah. you to pick your favorite child, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's an unfair question. <laughs> well, I reread the book before talking with you. And one of the things that, you know, the first time I read it, I read it. Second time I read it, I was reading it more for like, um, well, I used to teach literature. So I was reading it more as a literature teacher. And I, I saw all these great, like, oh, how to be good. Oh, the name is Goodheart. Oh, oh, this means something. <laughs> yeah. And I really like that. But one of the things that seems to be a constant mm -hmm. is that each one of your characters is somehow taking control. Hmm. Yeah. Um, gosh, I don't know how you would write the, uh, another version of that. I mean, aren't all your main characters like just trying to control something, even if it's just their, their, I don't, I don't, maybe I just couldn't write it any other way, but I'm like, I can't think of a book I've read where your main character is not in pursuit of some kind of control or, 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 but your characters take action. It's like, they're not going to be victims. I guess maybe that's, oh. I, I mean, even Lucy, even Lucy, I mean, she took an action. It might not have been the smartest action, but yeah. she took action and tried to take control rather than let others control her, even as, you know, a young girl. Yeah, I guess they all are um, at some moment that they're just, okay, this is it, we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. I think they're all a little bit at that point. There's not like the buildup happened before we got to the, to the story. And then uh, you know, sunrise, sunrise, he was going to, you know, on his terms, our man, Julian, yeah. he, he, oh, he Julian. the mistake yeah. wasn't a mistake. I, I, if I'm interpreting it, the, the mistake was what he wanted to happen. Um, mm -hmm. It's it, just, everybody was, was doing it. They were doing it. They might've been making bad decisions, but they were making decisions and not playing the victim. Yeah, and they, they, I, yeah, they are all maybe have been the victim. And now this is their, their, however they see that they're done with that. Yeah. Okay. Gosh, I've I mean, never even, been <laughs> even on Monday, on Monday nights, we danced in the dark. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, yes, yeah. she was, you know, it's, it's, 
I've been her. <laughs> so yes, she I, was I, I made some really bad decisions for some good reasons, but bad decisions. Yeah, she was wallowing for a long time though. Like and and watching. I mean, I think you have to. I think <sighs> Marissa was very much brokenhearted. So you know, she wanted to wallow, and I let her wallow in that. There was some fun in that. Yeah. Um, because you know, her mom wasn't doing it. No, her <laughs> mom was, her mom was not, her mom's like you hair on. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then when we get past that, it's the you know, the misery of bad dates and poor decisions again and again and again. You know, that was, yeah, that was <laughs> that was my um, uh, uh, Melissa Bank story. Um, I don't know if you read her. A Girl's Guide to Hunting and Fishing. Oh, and it's the on the list, spot. but I never got to it, yeah. Oh, she's so great. But she has this way of, her her stories are long and meandering in such a way that I just adore. Um, and it was like, okay, again, it's the, you know, she does this thing well, what is it about it? That made me like, okay, this is what I wanna do. And when I, um, we talked about Chicago and I went to Columbia College. One day, uh, me and another classmate, we walked out and it was late because I took night courses and the, God, I think, was it Michigan? I think they were on, off Michigan. So there's, a, is it, it must've been Millennium Park or Grant Park, but at any of the rate, we walked out of the building and there were people um, like dancing in the park, uh, just uh, like ballroom dance. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like, we just stood there and watched like it was, you know, there's late, there's no cars the light just on and they were just there twirling around the park. And my friend, he's like, I got to go find out. And he ran across to do that. And I went home and like jotted this idea down of why were, you know, why are they dancing in the park? And I'm sure um, he probably came back and told me that it was a dance class or something to that effect. But at that moment, like I didn't care why they were there because they were going to be there for my reason. Exactly. So <laughs> better than that was just a dance class. Yeah, I mean, it was you know the the build up to that though. I thought it was going to be this isolated thing, and it eventually worked itself into that story. Oh. You know, it became that. Good point. When I mentioned our man Julian, your face lit up. Do you want to say anything about Julian? I do love Julian. I've forgotten. I. It's been so long. I love uh, our man Julian. Uh, God, I spent a long time with that one. Um, because I got it in my head. I think I read something, an article about compassionate leave from prison mm -hmm. um, and reasons why people, you know, are, are getting out, their sentences are commuted or whatever. They were getting out of prison. And I'm like, well, what if somebody went to prison because they knew they were sick and that was the only way they were going to get their care? But I didn't want it to be about, you know, capitalism and money and hospitals and insurance and all that. I just really wanted to be the, why would you do this thing? And what was he going to do to make it worthwhile to get there? Yeah. Cause he's not, you know, and, and so, yeah, I, I he, again, terrible decision. Like really, <laughs> you know, like just the worst decision ever. Like let's go rob a bank. I'm in, you know, um, let me realize that social issues are kind of at the heart of every one of your stories in one way or another, but your stories are about people experiencing the social issues and the reader becomes aware without feeling lectured to. D is that something you were consciously trying to do or do you think that's just part of who you are and it came out? Um, I it was not something I was consciously trying to do. Um, only that I feel like if you are some of the, I think, I feel like the, the best crime stories in particular, um, are about, uh, people who don't have enough, um, uh, poor, lower middle class. Um, um, I mean, lower middle class, maybe they're striving for more and falling short, but I, either way, I feel like that in particular strikes people of color more than um, the white people. I mean, simply put, it does. Yeah. Um, but it, it, 
you riff off of that. And I think, I feel like a lot of, I mean, everybody knows, I mean, you know, you, you paid your, you know, your co-pays, you pay, you know, thousands of dollars over a year for your insurance and you go pay more at the office visit, you know, and you're like, yes, it's only a $25 copay because it used to be a $50 copay or things like that. Um, uh, I think you know about that. I know about that. Everybody knows, like you all, we all bring ourselves to a story. Um, um, and so whether it's, uh, you know, the fact that I, did, I don't have to go into, yeah, he doesn't have enough money, but also that reads into, he doesn't have the insurance to cover this thing. He knows what he's looking at. Um, and I think, you know, if you've ever had cancer in your life or someone close to you have had, you know, you've seen those bills or heard about those bills. Um, and I think social issues like that, um, the, the, the unfairness, because that is exactly what it like when you're facing, you can't act too desperately, um, a necessity of life. Uh, um, it, it can push you to do things that you wouldn't normally have done. Um, and I don't know that I can write about people of color um, and not have that be a part of it, because it's just an inherent part. It's instinctual to have even if you've had everything always, um, at this point where they're at, that character, they are lacking something. So that, that, and we all know somebody, I mean, like you've seen it on the news, what, I mean, like it's just, it is part of our everyday. And I don't know that necessarily whether you've experienced it yourself or you've heard about it, you can understand. Um, even if you don't, like, I would never do that. You know, like I wouldn't do, I would say 95% of the things these people do in my stories. <laughs> um, but do uh, we really know until we're in that situation? Exactly. Exactly. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to bury somebody out in the desert. I'm not, I'm not going to, <laughs> you know, none of my characters ever try to use the system that's there in front of them. They're like, there is no system they're using. They immediately bypass that. Um, I am, I'm always gonna try to use the system um, even if I know or feel I know that that it's not going to respond the way I would like. Yeah. So, but I mean, I feel like we all bring that, that inclination to like, like we said, the, the, the impulsiveness to that, like you want, to be able to, you know, like when you relive a fight in your head, the things you should have said, oh, yes. like that too, you know, like you don't have to, I mean, like you're, you know, in your head, how these people are feeling about it. And, and maybe if you don't, maybe you don't like my story so much and nah, my work's not for you, but <laughs> I think the people who like it um, can understand the, the, the the trouble in it, the trouble that that person's in even if they don't agree with it <laughs> there's definitely a universality to it that's something yes. that you can connect to the human element to it and i hope we didn't give especially me i hope i didn't give too much away but just enough to intrigue people to want to read your book oh i hope but, so too <laughs> i let me show it again i really it's called love and other criminal behavior I keep trying to put an S at the end of it, which I guess wouldn't be the worst thing. Um, no, no. And honestly, I went back and forth with that S or not. And I'm like, well, love, I was including love in criminal behaviors. Yeah. So it's love and other criminal behavior. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. <laughs> so make your library, buy it, buy mm -hmm. it yourself. Okay. Love and other criminal behavior by Nikki Dolson, uh, published by Bronzeville Books. And it was one of the finalists for the 2021 Clara Johnson Award given by Jane Story's Press Foundation. Nikki, thank you so much for your time today. It was such a delight talking to you. I can't wait. What are you working on? Uh, a little bit of everything. I, there's a novel I'm trying to breathe life into um, and short stories, short stories, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't wait to, to be able to read them. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome.